Of the 1.4 million, we estimate that, you know, whatever number it is, 30%, 40%, whatever Joey comes up with, you know, from, from some analysis, they're responsible for that. Because I could turn that water off since it's an emergency, and I really wouldn't have a lot of water issues. Yeah, we, we'd have to look at it, because you're talking about putting in, there's not a whole lot of difference between putting in fan filters or whatever, because you've got to supply them, and putting them in because you've got to, you want to connect somebody else up somewhere But else. I wouldn't need them now if I didn't have, if I didn't have that emergency system now. Yeah. I disagree as far it's as sand filters. Harder. Sir? I disagree as far as, far as the green sand filters. We would need those in order to take care of the, the hotels and the, uh, the motels in, in Caroline County as far as the quality of water. We, the green sand filters are going to deal with the quality of water and not the quantity of water. That's correct. And the wells the are new needed. Well. The but new well wells are needed. But my point is, is yes. the fact that if you look at the contract that is pending between the county and uh, Caroline Water Company, Lady Smith Water Lady Company, I'm sure who they are called right now, but there is a availability fee in there of what two hundred some thousand dollars. Uh, the thing is, just over three hundred. All right, three hundred some thousand dollars. From who? From, from the Lady Smith Water Company, which is for, based on a four-inch meter. They have to provide to us a fixture count, and depending on that fixture count, their appropriate size meter would be selected. So if they went with a six-inch meter or an eight-inch meter, then they'd have to pay that availability fee. And we won't know that until we actually get a fixture count that needs to be provided um, through a, a certified engineer of that system, and then we can assess the actual availability fee. But, I mean, that's, that's fair, though, right? Because oh, yeah, we're providing a absolutely. lot of water there absolutely. on an emergency basis that's been five years. You know, yeah, we've been serving it for about two and a half full time. Break for five years. Yeah, we've Absolutely. been full serving it for two and a half years. I'm still paying for my well, but that's another story. But there's got to be some no, contribution from that community since we're providing water that we hadn't planned to that's provide correct. water, and it's but been we, a five year emergency. And I think, again, if you go back to the availability fee that they're going to have to pay. There is contribution. Now, the only difference is, is the fact that he's going to pay it. There's no question. He's, yeah, he's going to increase their on. rates, right? He's going to pass the cost <coughs> on to the, the homeowners, and they're going to have to pay a higher rate as far as they're going to pay a surcharge charge too. He's going to he's going to put on a surcharge. If we charge them a dollar, he's going to charge them a dollar fifty. So he makes money by doing nothing, which is really a sweet job if you can State get State Corporation Commission is going to allow him to make 10 to 15 percent of return on his investment. So no matter what he does, he's going to make his return as a business. Yeah, but he's not doing anything. Right. But buying water. Can't argue that. that. Getting bulk water from us. Yeah, he, he's buying bulk water from us at a dollar and charging them a dollar fifty, exactly. which is really what it is. Three dollars. And, and, and that's why I like the idea of us going to each parcel and saying this parcel should pay X, whatever that is, and that could add up to 300000 Maybe 300000 is not enough, but we'll work on that again. But it okay. also does alleviate any increase in their bill from us because capital costs then we could actually absorb without trying to pass it on through water rates. Right. Because, again, we tack it on, they end up paying an increased water rate at 50% at more for anything we pass and, and, on. And, and I'm not trying to gouge anybody like the owner is. I just want to make it fair and equitable because, because I'm providing water there for an emergency basis, I'm running out of water. We, of we've been taking advantage of are paying for that. Now that's a case where they are. Yeah. And, and then, water. You know, we got to look at the bulk about. rate, but they're going to pass on the bulk rate. I, I, I want something that's fair and fair on both sides. They've got to make some contribution. I'm not trying to gouge them. I don't want to go through the owner of Lady Smith Water who may gouge them. I just want to make it fair. The 300000 is a start. Yeah, I think that's I, fair. I think the problem is, is the fact that the State Corporation Commission has not put this company in receivership, nor have they put this company, uh, said that you have to go bankrupt or foreclose. So the only thing the county could do at this point, I, I believe, is to say, we're not going to provide any more uh, water to, to the community over here. And you're talking about Lebanon you're not going to provide any more water to the people in, in Lake Carolina. We're going to shut you off. Now, and then the State Corporation Commission, I'm not sure what they're going to do, but we're not going to be able to go and put on a surcharge to the, to the property owners in Lake Carolina. We have no authority to do that. 
under any circumstances at this point because there's no... Well, we're selling to the... We're selling to ladies before. Yeah, well, that's the only difference. He's a bypass. If it was a service district, we would do that. But that's... But the money you collect would have to be spent specifically within that service district. And there's a percentage of whatever New Wells I'm buying. That's the same thing. To supply them water. Well, there's a significant user of any well we have. Exactly. Exactly. You know, if I was to go, if I say 1,100 homes, that's probably 30, 40 percent of our entire residential number, if not more. Right now, our residential base, without Caroline Pines, is about 738 residential connections. So it's 60 percent. And there's 1,000 homes in there. Okay. So there's, I mean, they're more than half. Half, yeah. But yet and still, they got this bulk water deal that, yeah, we're not getting full return on. No. Okay. So we need to increase our availability fees on... If it was if it was an eight inch meter, we're in upwards of eight hundred thousand dollars. If it required an eight inch meter, now they can put in a smaller meter, but it's based. Our code says it's based on a fixture count, and you would count basically. It's it's a, an engineering uh, process that you go through. It's, it's very methodical, and you count the fixtures in each sink, each toilet, uh, each water closet. Everything has a particular unit number that goes with that, and depending on what that unit number is, depends on what size meter has to be put in. And, and, of course, the bigger the meter, the more availability fee is. So you put an 8-inch meter in, um, you know, you're in upwards of $800,000, where if you go to a 10-inch meter, it's not in there, and then it's negotiated. So if you had to put a 10-inch meter, then it's a negotiation between the board and, and the water company at that point. Can, can we not? Okay. Well, well the, the two are related, uh, Mr. Underwood. We were, we were going to, because we have to do an ordinance for the option A or B anyhow. And I was just trying to make sure we had one ordinance. Yeah. We could do A and B, Caroline Pines, and an ordinance in Lake Caroline if we needed to. Thank if I can clarify, Mr. Thomas, A and B are just two different proposals. proposals. They've got nothing to do with the district itself. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It depends on how much money we assign to right. Caroline service Pines. District. Really what we do now is we establish a service district and we've got four things that we have to do. On page eight, Which name okay. and okay. page eight, we got to name and describe the boundaries. We got to describe the facilities and service proposed in the district. Describe the proposed plan to provide such facilities, and describe the benefit. Those are the four things that we would put in there, which is on page eight. So once we establish a sanitary district, and the board yeah. says move forward, we're going to have Mr. Emerson draft up the, the service district, and these are what we will put back in here to go to our public hearing. All right. Does the board wish to establish a service district in Caroline Pines? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we establish a service district for Caroline Pines subdivision. Second. Second. Motion made by Mr. Underwood, seconded by Mr. Popowitz and Mr. Seeley. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed nay. Motion carries unanimously. In attaching to that, Item 7A, Mr. Schiebel, would you follow up on our discussion? Because you're saying Caroline, um, Lake Caroline now we're discussing. Okay. Would you follow up? You're saying if it's an 8-inch meter, it's 800,000. I can get you the meter. exact numbers. Of what you got exact are. numbers? I, I said I can get those for you. I did not bring them with me tonight, and I don't know those uh, off the top of my head. Well, I doubt we're going to meet any more this year, but if you could, I can email it to you tomorrow if you'd if, like. If you would do that, I'd, I'd, I'd appreciate it just so we can see where we are. And I think we'll all have an understanding of, of what that is, and then the next board can establish the bulk rate, other things that might affect it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Having said all of that, um, Mr. Parton, we're going to do a uh, continued discussion of possible privatization of operation and maintenance of county water and sewer systems. So on one hand, we just talked a lot about what we want to do with the water and sewer, and the next hand, we're going to discuss about giving it away. So tell me your thoughts. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, staff has had uh, an opportunity to uh, review the proposals submitted by uh, American states, and uh, we believe that um, it would be more 
cost effective to continue uh, in-house operations. Um, if, if you want to get into the, the specific numbers, uh, that, that should be done in closed meeting. But um, uh, just very briefly, our analysis is that, that um, it makes sense from a cost standpoint to continue in-house operations, as, you, as you've seen in the, the memo in the board package. Question you want to ask? I have some questions about the numbers, Mr. Chairman. I think it would be prudent to go into closed session to talk about those. Okay. Bill, you have any questions? I have no questions, Mr. Chairman. Questions? I have no questions. Nothing's been said, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Do we want to move forward with privatization? I guess you want, to, you want your questions answered. Do you want to move forward with privatization? Not based on what I've seen, no. Not based on the numbers I have here, but as I say, Mr. Popowitz has other numbers, and I think that okay. we certainly need to look at those numbers. But I'm not, yeah. I don't feel it's in the best interest of the county based on these numbers. Yeah. I, I, I think I didn't get enough, I, the numbers that I have in front of me don't have enough clarification in my mind okay. to, to warrant not going for at least looking at this a little further. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. All right, we can, we can have a closed session to discuss that. Um, I think just to give him clarity, and we're only going to do numbers in closed session anyhow because it was their unsolicited proposal. So based on our rules, we'll go from there. Okay. Um, who's got number nine, the wastewater treatment plant electrical power issue? And didn't I just give you, did I just give you the co-op thing? Yes. About? No, that was their tariff. Ah, oh, Mr. Sheeple, good to see you again. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I'll try to... Do a quick overview, as you say, the Reader's Digest version. Oh, the, uh, at the wastewater treatment plant, uh, during the upgrade portion of the plant um, and working with Rappahannock Electric, um, they have brought to our attention uh, the current transfer switch we have, which is a, an electronic override system. Um, it is not a mechanical, what they call a break-before-make transfer switch. Uh, Rappahannock Electric feeds two different power services at two different voltage to the same facility. Uh, and if this were to accidentally be charged, could cause a fatal injury um, because of that. Uh, Rappahannock Electric's given us about a 17-page uh, disclaimer saying that continue providing us power, that we're going to have to agree that we take on all the liability. Uh, that's not something that Caroline Cannon wants to do, so we need to replace the current transfer switch, which has nothing to do at all with the upgrade of the facility. However, the timing of this facility being upgraded uh, is a benefit to us. Uh, during the review of this, it's going to cost $50,000 to upgrade uh, the transfer switch that's currently at the facility. On top of that, we have to pay a $720.88 a month fee forever. Uh, and, and that number, anytime there's a rate increase, that number could go up. But that's forever, and what that's called is an excess facility fee. Um, we are provided a backup power from a separate substation that we do not use on a regular basis, and we're tying up... Uh, about nine miles worth of line. In that, uh, we've come up with a couple options in order to do that. Uh, one option was, was maybe take the existing facility, put it on the power, the, the backup power through Rappahannock Electric. Uh, that did not work out cost-wise. And then the last thing we looked at is we can increase the size of the current generator and get rid of the backup line from Rappahannock Electric altogether. And in doing that, that would then become our primary source of power through one transformer. That takes care of a second issue we have at the facility. We would currently have two main power systems coming into the facility which could create an electrical hazard because when you cut the main breaker off, there's two main breakers. Now it would be located at one location. When it's off, it's off in the entire facility. That has a, uh, we would upsize the transfer switch which would be state of the art and it would be a break before make system. We would install a larger uh, breaker and then put new cabling between the old facility and the new facility. Uh, that is the staff's recommendation, $220,000 to upgrade the generator from a uh, 1,250 kVA to a 1,750 kVA, uh, which would carry the uh, uh, backup power for the existing facility. Really what catches us is the, the, the in perpetuity of the fees that Rappahannock Electric wants to charge. Uh, we have not been charged those in the past 22 years. Um, they said we're not going back to charge you what we haven't collected. However, moving forward, we would have to start. 
So basically by upgrading the generator, uh, we either get rid of the $720 fee every month or the $2,800 fee every month. Okay. So basically we have three options. We do, sir. And Mr. Partners just told me that there's a mistake in the packet. He recommends option three, um, which is the $221,000 one time cost. And then there's no charge in perpetuity. So in the long run, that looks like the most economical cost. Okay. Can I ask a question? One second. Um, the other interesting point in, the, in this presentation is the sentence before the last one. Um, the balance of 688000 would would remain available for the cost, and that would take you to generator. And the last sentence is, this is due in large part to the significantly lower than expected construction bid for the project. For the Caroline Pines project. Just kind of highlighting that lower than expected construction bid for the project. Just highlighting the lower than expected construction bid for the project. We had a request to remove that verbiage, sir. You had requests? Yes, sir. I don't think that's something to remove. That's something to highlight and make 10 inches big. I mean, it's good that we did that, but to, to try to bring that particular uh, project into light. But it, has, uh, it is a reduced cost uh, that we did see. Mr. Some of the Siebel, best costs that we've seen. My point has nothing to do with you at all. I understand. You just happen to be here saying something that I'm very interested in. And it seems like. Seems like you're going to whack another mole. Yeah, but my arm is getting tired. <laughs> So I find it interesting that your project would be lower than expected, but other projects would be higher than expected. Yeah, the, the project, Much higher. The construction project was estimated at 2.4, and it came in at 1.5. All right. Can I have a question? I thought Mr. Un Underwood oh. was making a motion. To, oh, we, we won. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Yes, you had a question. Okay. Yeah, I did. Was it about the lower than expected construction cost? No, no, it has nothing to do with that. Sure? You, you beat that pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to say one more time that the construction costs were lower than expected. Right ahead. Go right, right ahead. Mr. Akers. Number two, what is the life, and is there a life expectancy of these generators? Is it 10 years, 20 years, 30 years? And this size generator, typically 25 years. And as the system grows, is that going to require a larger generator? What I'm trying to determine here is is number two maybe a better option than number three. You're talking about an additional $221,000 over and above the $400,000 that's going to be spent for the generator itself. Correct? Yes, sir. Uh, if we pay $400,000, we got $50,000, and then you can pay... We've got to do the four hundred dollars either way. That's that's a done deal. Right. We've got to do that. Right. But the seven twenty, dollars and, and that's a monthly fee, which is... Uh, Eighty-four, eighty-five hundred dollars a year, right? Mm -hmm. And so for ten years, you can go for eighty-five thousand dollars, and you add the eighty-five to the fifty is out of thirty-five, and add that to the four hundred, uh, you're talking about five hundred thirty-five thousand dollars. And that's my question: Was it a ten-year lifespan? Is it a fifteen-year lifespan? Are we looking at changing and increasing the size of the generators in ten years? Or are we saying twenty-five years is going to be life of them? Seven hundred and twenty dollars over twenty-five years is two hundred and sixteen thousand. And then you add your, your 50 on top of that. Yeah, no, my, my question was, or my point is, is 25 years going to be the time frame in which we're going to have to look at this issue again? I guess that's the problem I've, I'm having is the fact that we that's have to look point. at the... That's yeah, the point. Yeah, we have to be looking at these things, we think, for 25 years, but in 10 years we have to look at it again, or in 15 right. years we have to look at it again. Or in 20 years. Now, this is a massive generator. We've got generators currently. Um, if you look at the pump station that we've got in Coma Church when we originally started the system in 1989, that's still running um, and, and is serviceable today. Uh, so it's got 20 years on that, and it's a small, small generator in comparison. I mean, this is, I mean, this is going to be mammoth. And, and, and to give you an idea, um, you're probably talking about a little bit bigger than a school bus. So it's so you're not. You're saying this generator, without question. We will never, we will not have to increase the size of this generator for 25 years, nor would we have to replace this generator for at least 25 years. That's what you're saying. No, sir. 
If you upgrade the wastewater treatment plant, you will need a bigger generator. It will run the existing facility at 1.5 MGD, so it will meet the design flow of the expanded facility. If you double the increase to 3 million gallons, you're going to need another generator to run the new section. What's our plan for the upgrade? To expand to a 3 MGD at the current facility, um, put in another reactor unit, two additional clarifiers. No, uh, I mean when? Year, when? Year um, depends on which plan you look at. Uh, if you look at our current water master plan, or the not master plan, the, the water plan, it's showing that we won't have to upgrade the plant for 25, 30 years. Um, if the growth comes back and, and, you know, we end up using a million and a half gallons in 10 years, and then we'll be 10 years. And right now it's who's got the best magic ball. But that's a good thing. If, we, if, 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 we, uh, if growth comes and we have to upgrade, that's a good thing. Based on, yeah, but, but, the, but the, the, the point he's making is, and, and this, this is the math we use for everything, is it better for me to spend $400,000 now and this $50,000 cost, pay the seven twenty dollars every month? And you do the math on seven twenty, dollars whatever it is, $8,600 a year times 20 years, 360 whatever it is. Is that more economical than doing the one-time 221000 payment? Because if it breaks down in 10 years or we replace it in 10 years or expand in 10 years, we would have spent a lot less than $221,000. Yeah, but, but he's going to – go ahead, Fran, I'm sorry. This is a point of clarification. That $720.88 is an operating cost. So it comes out of an operating maintenance normal budget. The 221 would come out of the bond proceeds that you already had. Oh, I'm moving right along now. Thank you. <laughs> I'm moving right along now. Okay. Um, I think that answers your question, doesn't it? Okay. So Three. what's the total amount that Three. the additional then? Six? 221. 221. 221. Okay. It's not 621. No, we have to pay the 400 anyhow. That was already yeah. in there. Okay. And it's 221 is not going to be such a ding because, wait a minute, let me get to the page. Oh, poof. It's on the first page. Anyhow, the construction costs were a lot less than expected, so I think that's what we needed to say one more time. All right, Mr. Schiebel, you convinced us on option three. Actually, Mrs. Hatcher did, but uh, I think we're good. Um, motion to that effect? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion made by Mr. Underwood, second by Mr. Popowitz, that we will uh, move ahead with option three as presented for the wastewater treatment plant electrical power issue. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion carries unanimously. Item 9A is the uh, fees refunded for the VZA. Is there a motion to that effect? I'm making a motion that we refund uh, Mr. and Mrs. Lambert the $600 fee that they paid for clarification. Second. One Discussion. question. Discussion, Mr. Is the, is the issue now resolved, or are we going to are we going to start over, or are we I, done with that? I, I don't think the issue is resolved, but that would be right. a question for Mr. Fincham. Um, Not resolved. I think there's more discussion. Right. They needed a clarification, and they had to. They had to go before BZA to get a clarification, and we should have worked something out where they got a clarification before the BZA. So we're giving them the six, $600 back. They may eventually come, have to come back to BZA again, but we were trying to be a kinder and gentler board and make sure they got a clarification before they had to go to BZA. Okay. Right. I just wondered if it resolved the issue or not. No, and I'm sure we'll have a chance to talk to him again. She's not smiling, so I assume it didn't. All right. Um, do, 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 no Merry, more discussion. Merry Christmas, Ms. Lamb. No more. It's not coming until the, the, the first of the year. Happy New Year. <laughs> July 1, <laughs> the new fiscal year. All right. I don't, I don't know when it's coming. I'm All right. We, are, um, we got discussion. Motion was made. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. That motion carries unanimously. I've added 9B just for the board's understanding based on our public comment section. Mr. Emerson has created, if you don't have to read it, can I just summarize if that's okay? Trust me. Okay. 
Mr. Emerson, trust me, I'm with the government. Mr. Emerson has created an emergency resolution for fireworks in the rural preservation area only, which will, excuse me? What did I say? Okay, same thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you, sir. Has created an emergency ordinance, which we can do based on the health and public safety of citizens right away until we have time to adopt a full one um, that would prevent fireworks in the RP district, zoning di district, until February 10th. That will, February 1st, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm close enough. Which will give us the entire month of January to get a resolution and have a, have a public hearing. That will kind of take care of what's going on there. Problem? Okay. No, Mr. Chairman, I, but I certainly would like to, um, during the last state fair, I think the firework display was closer to Mrs. Lambert's property was on the hill and her property is there. I think we need to take a look at where we want to locate that so it so we do the less the least amount of harm. Right. Um, so I think we need to just take a look at the whole scheme. Well we're gonna do this one first, which yes. take, take takes care of those and, and we'll ask Mr. Fincham as he develops the ordinance if he can take a look at uh, Ms. Garnett does it? Okay. It's between the two of you if you can look at that and Okay, so Thank emergency you. ordinance for fireworks not in the RP until February 1st. Questions? Motion to adopt. So moved. Second. Motion made by Mr. Akers, seconded by Mr. Underwood. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries unanimously. County administrators report capital projects update. Mr. Park. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, you have the, the capital projects update. Uh, be happy to answer any questions you have on that and quickly would call your attention to a couple of calendar events uh, the swearing in ceremony on the 22nd at 3 o'clock for newly elected officials and uh, again county offices will be closed on uh, on Friday December 23rd and Monday December 26th for the Christmas holidays that's all I had tonight yeah I don't, I don't know why we're giving so much time off we're following the state schedule Okay, um, you mentioned the employee, uh, There's an employee, employee lunch, lunch in on uh, the 22nd, the same day as the swearing in at, uh, at 12 noon, right? Here, EOC. Here. Yes, in the EOC. Okay, employee lunch in EOC, Thursday the 22nd, then 3 o'clock swearing in. The swearing in is for all elected officials. And is it in the old courtroom or the new one? The old historic one. We did the last one. We did the last one in the new courthouse. You were in the new courthouse. I was new. Yeah. Okay. We we used to be in the old historic courtroom. That's the one basically off of Main Street in Bolingbrook. I don't know if we can get in that way, but yeah, you can get in that way. You can. We got metal detectors there. All right. Mr. Parton's done. We are going to go into, we're, yeah, we are going to go into closed meeting just to briefly discuss the numbers. We're going to do that. The personnel item you have in um, closed meeting was the utility director position. And I think I had some discussion among the board privately that we're going to let the new county administrator select the utility position. So we don't need to go into that for that. So we'll just go under for the other two. Okay. All right. Closing board comments, Mr. Underwood. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. I have I have two closing comments. Um, as we look for for money for schools and other projects, um, I will be coming to the board with a list of services that I believe we can combine in the district. I think you know maintenance of vehicles and maintenance of ground building and grounds and those types of things. We don't need two or three maintenance departments. We don't need two or three building garages to uh, maintenance garages to work on vehicles. So, I, so I'll be, I will be combining a list or assembling a list and giving in that to you, Mr. Chairman, to move to Mr. Pardon to have a take a look at that to see if we can combine those services and try to save the taxpayers some money. 
2nd on last Friday, um, Mr. Whiteman and I, he was so gracious to let me spend a day with him riding through the county looking at some of the Quinn River project uh, and some things that we can do to beautify our county. I want to say thank you, Mr. Whiteman. I enjoyed it, and I'll be bringing some things before the board later on about things that we can do, I think, to better position ourselves with some of the residents and residents of those Quinn River houses. Thank you, Mr. Underwood. Mr. Whiteman and I did some walking around together today. Mr. Seely, I'll get to you last. I have none. Mr. Akers? Chairman, I do have two, two comments. Uh, one is uh, it does have to do with schools. And uh, what I would like to ask this board to do is to uh, have Mr. Pardon to uh, set a meeting between this board or the new board, as well as the school board, uh, maybe before the next meeting that we would have uh, as a board to discuss the uh, renovations projects, whatever. I just think it's important that we look at the big picture as far as schools are concerned. You've mentioned wacker moles and wacker projects, and I and I agree 100 percent. And I think that is one of the issues we've had in uh, with uh, in working together. To be honest. Uh, so I would like to, to see us as, as two new boards to start off a with a fresh start, uh, one that we can sit down and look at the big picture of school buildings in this county. If we're looking at a new high school, then fine, let's, let's discuss the new high school, discuss how we're going to get to a new high school, and then let us discuss what we're going to do with the buildings that, that we have. We cannot continuously to build a new building and throw away the old, old building that we move out of. It's just, it's no way we can do it. No other county does that. Caroline County is not going to be able to do that. So just to make Band-Aid repairs. repairs is not going to serve us in the long run, nor is it going to serve the people of Caroline County and the children of Caroline County in the long run. We have to have a comprehensive, and that's what's been, not, been lacking, to be honest with you, in coming to this board, they, you know, in the past, this board has gotten requests on $6.7 million to do these improvements at Bowling Green Elementary and Bowling Green Primary and Madison, uh, the old Madison, uh, Ladysmith Primary School. So we pump in $6.7 million. Well, we find out that $6.7 million wasn't needed for those projects, so it was used on lots of other projects. And it is, we've got to stop that process. There's just no way we're going to be able to survive and that's the reason we get ourselves in the position that we were in tonight, trying. It appears that we're pitting each other, uh, each side with each other, and we're not. This board is certainly, the years I've served on it, have, we have tried to look at the, what's best for Caroline County, is what's best for the students of Caroline County, and the people of Caroline County. But you cannot, doing it, cannot do it by continually to put band-aid fixes on a major problem. So if we can do that, Again, I would like to see that happen before the meeting on the 12th or 13th of January, whenever it is. So when we come to that meeting, we'll all have an understanding as to what's, what's required and what we are looking at in the future. Uh, the other comment I would have is the fact that uh, Mr. Popowitz, uh, we've served four years together. Uh, there have been times when uh, we've not agreed. There have been times when we've had some uh, uh, heated discussions and arguments, but I, I've appreciated uh, the fact that uh, we have been able to work those out, and I appreciate you, and uh, I've enjoyed serving with you uh, on this board in the last four years. When you first come on the board, I wasn't sure how you, how we were going to deal with each other, but we figured out a way to do it, and uh, and that's what it's what it's all about, and I, I do appreciate uh, you and uh, being able to work with you over the last four years. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Akers. Um, Pardon the follow-up, I think the school board will meet the 9th and we'll meet the 10th in our first meeting. If it's possible that we could meet the week of the 2nd, I think the 2nd is actually a holiday. That's the uh, New Year's Day holiday. So maybe we can meet the 3rd or 4th or something like that. Well, the 4th is the legislative uh, reception uh, or meeting in Tappahanna. Meet with the uh, members. Of the yeah, that's the uh, get-together. So maybe... Or the Maybe the third or, or the, the fifth. Or the fifth. Mm -hmm. That would be good. Fifth would be good. Fifth would be good? Yeah. Okay. Good. Let's start for the fifth. They will all be officially 
school board members, or they will they, they won't have a chance to organize as a board. But we really just want to talk and please. I'm serious. Bring me an olive branch. I'd be happy to extend that. Okay. Um, I have uh, two comments. One is I was given. I was at the senior gala. Um, last week, the week before last, last week, and I was given a plaque of appreciation for the Board of Supervisors for its ongoing support of the Rotary Christmas Gala, and this came from the Rotary Club of Caroline. So I'm giving it to Mr. Parton to hold in the Board of Supervisors conference room or wherever your office, wherever you want to put it. And the other one was to say the same thing. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Popowitz, for your service. Done a fine job on uh, you know many projects that you picked up. I think we agreed on a lot of good things. I was moving you a little more to the middle, anyhow. <laughs> but anyhow, I saved you for last. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, uh, Mr. Popowitz, your closing board comments. One one thing, Mr. Chairman, I, I, um, I was put on the um, committee to to look at your new fire chief. And you're going to stay. Yes, sir. And I wanted to make sure that uh, that was okay with the rest of the board. So yes. Okay. Excellent. So I will be seeing you again for that recommendation, hopefully. Um, finally, um, I, I want to thank the entire board. It's been a pleasure to work with each and every one of you. Um, and uh, I hope that uh, the new board uh, is as uh, vibrant and ready for the changes that are coming up, because we're probably going to see many. And I hope that they take the same fervor that I think this board has taken. Uh, like I said, we don't always agree, but that's okay. That's what democracy is about. Um, most of all, I want to thank the citizens of Port Royal District for giving me the honor and privilege of being able to serve on this board. Um, I think that, that is, those are the, the folks that, that really need the thanks because they've entrusted to me for the last four years their future. And uh, that is a great honor, and I, I certainly appreciate that. There's some folks out there that I'd like to thank that are on our staff. Mr. Parton, thank you. You have uh, been uh, more than uh, generous with your time, uh, sometimes taking calls on weekends and other things, and I appreciate that. Ms. Hall, thank you. I, I know that um, I'm not the easiest guy to get a hold of. I'm also not the easiest guy to keep track of, and I appreciate your, uh, your, uh, your fervor. Mr. Emerson, your counsel is certainly well, has always been well appreciated. Uh, Ms. Hatcher, uh, thank you for your service. I appreciate it. Um, I know sometimes that I've made you pull your hair out, but that's okay. Mr. Schiebel, it's been a pleasure to work with you. And uh, good luck in the future with your endeavors. Mr. Whiteman, as well, thank you. Um, but there are two people that I really want to thank. Um, because I've worked with them the most, and that's uh, Mr. Mike Fincham and Mr. Gary Wilson. Um, you know, we've had to, to do a lot of things together. We've had to go to a lot of different places together, and, and guys, thank you so much for your counsel, your, your help, and actually believing in what I was trying to do and, and putting the meat to the bones to the vision. I really appreciate it, guys, and, and uh, good luck in the future, and I think you guys are, are going to do fantastic things for Caroline County. And with that, I say adieu. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Popowitz. Um, it has been a pleasure. I think that, is that Mr. Black still back there? Is that a Yankee hat you're wearing? Oh, all right. All right. We look forward to seeing you, uh, well, actually the 22nd and then January 1st. You'll be a part of this board officially. I think that was it. Closing comments. Again, Mr. Popowitz, thank you. And uh, we will take a short break, and then we will be in a uh, closed meeting, and then we will adjourn for the year. Reconvene from closed session. I make a motion uh, to come out of closed, of, uh, closed session. Closed session. Closed meeting. Second. Motion made by Mr. Aker, second by Mr. Seeley. All in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously. Mr. Underwood, do you certify that only those items we went into closed session were discussed? Mm -hmm. I so certify. Mr. Popowitz. I so certify. Mr. 
Seeley? I so certify. Mr. Akers? I so certify. And I so certify. No action items were required out of the closed meeting. So we will now take a motion to adjourn. So moved, Mr. Chairman. And my question is to adjourn to the uh, fifth or whatever it is we're going to meet with the school board. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll have to adjourn to anyhow. We have to adjourn to because we won't have time to advertise. Right. So we will adjourn to our proposed meeting of the fifth with the school board. So we'll move, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. voted on it, but if you would like to read the full emergency ordinance as you drafted, go right ahead. Whereas the Board of Supervisors has determined that Chapter 50 of the Caroline County Code regulating fireworks displays may be inadequate to protect the health, safety, and welfare of the citizens of the county living in the Rural Preservation District, and whereas the county needs time to modify such chapter to adequately address such health, safety, and welfare issues as may exist, and whereas the board believes it to be in the best interest of the citizens of the county to restrict the display of fireworks in the Rural Preservation District temporarily until the health, safety, and welfare issues can be studied in Chapter 50 of the Code amended accordingly, and whereas the board has the authority under the Code of Virginia to adopt ordinances in an emergency without a public hearing, now, therefore, the board hereby determines that an emergency situation exists in the county with respect to the potential for fireworks displays before Chapter 50 can be amended to address its concerns. And the board hereby declares a moratorium on the issuance of permits for displays of fireworks in the Rural Preservation District until February 1, 2012, and prohibits such displays until such date adopted this 13th day of December 2012. Thank you, Mr. Emerson. That was the uh, ordinance that, that we pre previously voted on. So at this point in time, a motion to adjourn to a proposed meeting on the 5th would be in order. So moved. Mr. Second. Chair. Motion made by Mr. Popowitz, second by Mr. Akers. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Gentlemen, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.